So there's been a couple of videos that I've been looking at about consoles to PC. Now I just want to explain something to everybody so we know where we're coming from. I'm kind of a PC guy. Um, I've been developing games and writing games I think since 90, the mid-1980s. So um, I'm quite used to PCs before they were, you know, your Windows PC. Um, so what we need to do is have a look at what's the difference between them. Now if I run some b-roll um, of gameplay, I switch all the settings to the lowest possible settings on my PC and I'll get something similar to what you're getting from your console. Now console hardware is all set so let's have a look at what the um, disadvantages are. Of your console are you'll pay more for games you'll have lower um, graphics quality um, a lower frame rate um, you'll pay um, more for your games I think I've already done that one um, but yeah um, and you'll have to replace your console every couple of years um, replacing a whole lot so let's have a look at the disadvantages of PC you're gonna cost more to make it I can't really think of any other disadvantage um, from it, so let's have a look at advantages. A console is a smaller device overall, um, doesn't take up too much space. Um, yeah, that's probably about it. Um, and what are the advantages to PC? Well, um, right, okay, you can swap out your hardware uh, if it gets old and just replace the old part of it. Now, there are some niche smart parts to this because if you upgrade um, certain um, processors with motherboards, then that would be a issue. However, AMD um, made their AM4 socket so you could upgrade with their processors using the same socket so you don't have to actually replace your motherboard. So, um, yeah, so you could just change your graphics card over um, to a newer graphics card and that should, um, uh, you know, deal with um, upgrade problems. Um, you'll have more RAM, you can um, have high settings and the experience is going to be a lot nicer looking. Um, you're not limited in the games because with PC games you can have... Um, really complicated games now I have a game which is quite old now and there is uh, 300 uh, button functions which you need a keyboard for um, it's actually a simulator and it's very realistic and all the buttons operate doing three different functions each it's an absolute nightmare to play the game it took me ages to actually understand it uh, and even be able to do anything in the game so you know you can do that I can also because a lot of people go oh well I'm used to using one of these this is a USB uh, controller that plugs straight into my PC so with some games I'll sit there and play on a console controller um, because it's just the game is that simple um, you know like Fortnite or something like that so um, yeah, so there's a huge amount of advantage over a PC because I can do photo, video editing, um, I can increase my storage um, without paying premium rates, um, I can attach it to a network, um, I can stream to and from it, um, you know, so there's a huge amount of difference there. It's a really big benefit. So I'm paying more for it, perhaps, um, but I'm getting a lot more for my money. So it's better value. And after, you know, three to five years, um, I may have to spend uh, £400 uh, to upgrade that to do um, the same quality increase over the consoles. So um, what do you need and what is the hardware? Well, the computer is a bit like Lego. It's got a motherboard where everything plugs into, processor, uh, memory, hard drives and your graphics card. Um, it has a power supply unit and it all fits into a standardised box and all the parts are all standardised. You can't use an Intel board with an AMD processor because the sockets will be different and certain types, especially with Intel, it's more difficult because you're going to get loads of different uh, processors with different sockets which fit different motherboards and sometimes if you get the wrong one there you could end up buying, um, getting the wrong type of RAM that you would need or the, not the highest performance and so on and so forth. So it does become a bit of an issue there. If you go down the AMD route, you're going to be paying less. Um, the boards are uh, processors on the boards are very interchangeable. 
um, on an AM4 socket that is um, and you know PCI Express is your graphics card they're all the same no matter if it's Intel or AMD it's not really going to make any difference at all so um, what you can do is you're going to be looking for a, a good gaming experience so one of the things you can do is either order a PC from somebody who makes them now you have to be really careful there are so many cons around um, I um, owned GT Ultima systems um, and I built the higher end tier system so your £7,000 computer systems. Now I design up computers specifically uh, based from an engineering point of view and a end user point of view so my specifications I would draft up a rough um, outline of a computer and then I would talk with the clients that wanted that computer and say, well, look, what do you use it for? Okay, you need this such and such hardware has to be changed over because this bulks performance and so on and so forth. So that we had a really good a high end uh, system and the maximum performance. And in fact, some of those systems uh, were uh, aged sort of almost a decade and we're still keeping up with the newest tech um, because of a uh, very select uh, tuning process, which I charge a premium for so what I normally do is hunt round for the lowest prices um, <clears throat> and then have a look at the engineering papers but because I build PCs and because I'm into the technical details of it I kind of keep ahead so I know which who's making the fastest RAM um, the most stable RAM, who's making the better motherboards, who's making the best BIOS, who's making the best of this that and the other, who's making the fastest and how that uh, equates to you is not buy all the stuff that they say is fastest because that doesn't actually work that's not entirely true at all and there are things called bottlenecks now if you get something that runs really fast but then has to go for a slow part everything goes as slow as this slow part so you can't bottleneck your system now I've got some uh, 15 20 year old systems which actually outperform um, in certain aspects most modern computers and I'm on about modern as in you could go out and spend over 1200 pounds today and it will still be slower so you know you've got to really take some sort of care and I don't mean to like add scale or something like that into the build of the PCs or your what you think um, and what you're estimating so overall your experience is going to be better with a PC um, you can download and obviously use your Steam libraries and everything else that's not really going to be an issue now there is a some caveats here which really do come into those we have a budget in mind now you've got APUs these onboard graphics and if you've used a computer with onboard graphics before you're going to know that they are utterly crap well AMD's graphics are not utterly crap they're actually um, outperform some of the graphics cards and some of the old top of the range 700 pounds graphics cards obviously there is a considerable difference because back then obviously graphics cards have improved so what can you do to um, game on an APC and what will be the best thing well for starters you're going to be looking at a minimum of eight gigabytes of memory and if you're going down the AMD route which I would probably recommend because it's the best performance best prices um, uh, best upgrade path um, so you probably will want to go down that route now um, you can pick up an AMD AM4 board um, for about 60 70 pounds you can pick up a power supply for about the same amount of money so that's about 120 pounds you can then um, buy a, a a processor from AMD with a G on the end of it which means to distinguish it's got graphics on it for probably about 80 to 120 pounds so you're going up to about 300 pounds then you can buy SSD drives or M.2 drives the um, case is up to you you can go really cheap um, and pay like less than 20 pounds for a case which I really don't recommend um, they're really flimsy they won't last you and you're looking at probably if you're going to go for a case uh, look for something plus 50 pounds to probably about 100 pounds and for about 120 to 160 pounds um, you can get some really really good cases and I'm not going to list a list of recommended cases um, uh, uh, Gamers Nexus um, does case reviews I suggest that you do go there and have a 
earth. Um, do you need water cooling? Um, no, you don't need water cooling at all. Uh, water cooling kind of um, gives a temperature, but because of the way the processes work these days, it doesn't actually mean that your system will overall run cooler or dissipate heat better. Um, air cooling is absolutely fine. But um, I will give a word of warning. I have reviewed the AMD Rafe Prism, which is their newest, latest and greatest cooler, and I think it performs about 20 watts too low, and therefore you do get high temperatures and this can relate to problems with BIOS as well. So understanding the AMD processor. The AMD processor was uh, the first to make multi-cores and in 2006-07 I wrote and a group of us engineers wrote about the um, what we call now the Threadripper. Um, so they have these multi-cores and they're cores with a controller core inside them so you get three parts. Uh, with the GPU you get more because obviously the graphics processor which is on a graphics card is actually inside the processor die as well. So what you do is um, you can get decent frame rates and if you have a 1080 screen which is your old HD screens then you're not going to get any real big issues or notice any really big problems. However the um, iGame and play on a 14 I think that's a 1440 screen. It's got a 75 refresh rate. Now a lot of people are going to go, oh I can really notice the difference with XYZ performance etc. And this is kind of in their mind only. You can notice certain things and it's really technical and I don't really want to go into the details of it but um, your eye sees probably about 30 frames per second which is why that's the minimum set um, in your console. Um, and it kind of gets a bit laggy if it drops anywhere below, you'll notice it quite plainly. Um, so anything above 60, um, 65, and if it stays there, that's your lowest you really want to go to in your frame rates, then you're not really going to do it. And 60 hertz and 60 hertz monitors or 60 frames per second is exactly the same thing. There's no really difference in there, but if you go for you know your 75, you're going to get a really good quality image, um, and you want your graphics card to actually able to perform that as its lowest possible. Um, frame rate so you can go for graphics now if you want to go for AMD or um, as they're known I keep on calling them ATI because that's what they were to me um, if you go for Nvidia or ATI there are some slight differences in the graphic rendering uh, from the two processors so you can I always used to go with ATI because of the uh, render quality in certain aspects I mean Nvidia kind of did it exactly the same same in that there might be an explosion with fireball, um, but it looked like a cartoon, whereas ATI it looked like a fireball, so it looked more realistic. So I'm kind of like a fanboy for ATI's graphic rendering, but I'm always into rendering, so it's got to look good. Um, however, I might be an ATI, a, a, AMD or ATI fanboy, but I am actually running NVIDIA, and I have been running NVIDIA for quite some time years so um, I currently use a 1660 and that has 6 gigabyte of RAM and I use that card um, simply because I was upgrading from a 974 gig uh, to the 1660 uh, 6 gig um, and that's because of video editing and gaming performance now the video card RAM if you see video cards out there for sale um, be really careful what you're buying now VRAM or video card RAM and that's how many gigabytes or megabytes of memory are on the actual graphics card really does make a huge difference to game performance. Um, you won't actually be able to play games if you have too little VRAM so you really do need to be really careful there. I would suggest that if you're going for um, any anything over HD that you need to be really looking at the 4 gigabyte mark. Um, certain rendering and tools will require a bigger RAM in your vid video card so just keep that in mind um, if you're doing 1080 um, HD you can go as low as 2 gigs but I would recommend it because otherwise you're just going to be um, upgrading your graphics card really soon rather than later so aim for a modern GPU a 970 which um, I just literally 
um, got rid of actually performed well in more or less every single game that I put on there there was no glitches no stuttering nothing like that um, and that was perfectly fine I had no problems there at all the 1660 currently runs at about 100% but my processor is so much more powerful because of video editing that my processor will run at sort of like 27% and my graphics card will run at 100% so that's maxed out at what it can do on a, um, a high resolution um, high refresh rate anyway so uh, what do we do? Um, now if you're into gaming, you're going to need to have, like you want, obviously you come from a console so your load times like take a week. So um, what you need to do is obviously you can download everything now, everything's like a download, you don't have to go out and buy the disc and it's kind of cheaper anyway. Um, you install that onto a hard drive and how you set up your hard drives is going to make a difference to your load times and what type of hard drives that you actually use. Now it gets a little bit confusing because there's a load of different options that you can use. Now um, I, I've seen all the myths and fantasies and delusions and false media um, posted on YouTube about um, drive speed and load times. Now your game sets, depending on what type of game you use, the more quality the game, as in you know how it originally looks, the more data is going to be uh, loaded up for that so that goes into your system ram now getting it from the hard drive to the ram is where your load times come from so what you need to do is really think about how you do your um, configuration of your hard drives now the um, uh, error in most people's ways is they say put your operating system on an ssd and load all your games from a mechanical drive. Um, do the exact opposite to that, um, then your games will load a lot quicker, but your system's load and boot time is going to be slower. It's not hugely slower because it's literally just the operating system, so you're not really um, loading up, you know, um, 10, 5, 10 gigs of um, game file uh, to play your game. So that's the difference there. Um, I would recommend probably actually having a small OS um, operating system, uh, SSD drive um, or M.2 drive. I think M.2 drive is probably a waste really. Uh, yeah, so a SATA, you know, these box of it, where is it? Okay, it's over there, I can't bother to reach for it. Um, an SSD drive, SATA cable, just plug that in. Um, that will do your operating system. You want to put um, your hard drives in RAID array. Um, what it does basically is, a say a hard drive will give you 300 megabytes. Um, if you have 300 megabytes and 300 megabytes, theoretically you get 600. Now, um, this will give you obviously 600 megabytes. And if you plug in that one SSD drive, you're probably looking at about five to 700, just under, um, on the same respected kind of scale, because it's not re that's not realistic at all. Um, so what you do is you put your drives together and then you can run them both together which will give you a higher speed although if one drive fails uh, the other drive will you, you can't cope with losing all that information so it's basically like you'll lose half your file and therefore everything will be broken so it's always a good idea to have a secondary backup so what you do is you put your SSD drive in then you have your RAID array which you'll load all your games from from IDE drives or whichever way you want to do it um, and then you'd have a copy so if you get two two gigabyte uh, two terabyte drives here for your game library um, make sure you get a four to six terabyte drive so you can copy everything over to a single drive one drive um, or some sort of network storage um, device now I said network storage device because uh, there's a lot of videos about storage devices and SANS or DASs uh, which I promote way over these crap NASs um, which you can lose all your data through so um, yeah, so it, there's kind of like a little configuration curve. It is actually quite simple. Most of the motherboards um, have it built in. So if you go to a computer and boot it up, um, some of them will come up and go RAID controller press control S or control C or control Z or F10 to operate that um, or access and configure it. And all you're doing is basically just going in, adding the two drives and clicking next and setting the cluster size. Now the cluster size will make a difference. Um, aim for something, if you get it and it'll say cluster size and it'll say something like 64K, 128, 512, something like that. If you go for a 128K, you'll probably going to get a good data rate through it. If you put it too big, it will cause problems. If it's too small, then it obviously you're transforming very small data and um, taking bus speed up on your system board. So it's really easy, really simple, straightforward, and um, yeah, you shouldn't really shy away from it. Thanks for watching.